What's up, YouTube? Welcome to another episode of Petverse. What do you got for us today, Rick? What am I so, looking at? So, this is... The common name for this is the Helmahera Giant Gecko. Scientific name is Gera Marginata. These are from Southeast Asia, uh, Indonesia specifically. This is a very large gecko. It is... He's going to jump on the camera. It's a very large gecko. They are very, very fast. Not very common in the, uh, the reptile hobby. Not a lot of people keep these because this is rare. To have an animal like this that is this calm and allows me to handle it. I have several others of these that they're psychotic. They cannot be handled. I have one that has escaped multiple times on me, <laughs> and we have to chase it around in the basement here. This is this is an animal that typically comes into the hobby as a wild-caught import, and they're relatively cheap. You can buy these from uh, reptile importers. They're $30 to $50 animals. And they're not going to live very long because they come in, they're stressed out, they're dehydrated, they're full of parasites. Ooh, can you give me some love nibbles? <laughs> they're dehydrated, full of parasites, and unless you have experience with animals that are imports and can get to a vet that can deal with reptiles or you have the medications that can be used to rid them of parasites, they typically don't last very long in captivity. And it, it frustrates people that buy these because they're so cool, but they do not last long because of the health issues. So that's why with these guys, it is super important to support breeders like me that are producing these in captivity. You're going to pay a little bit more. This as an adult is a $150 to $200 animal. And this is an example of their escapability. But this guy... I ha I worked with him a lot. He's very calm. He doesn't necessarily like me handling him, but he will tolerate it and let us get some good footage. Um, but that's why it's important to support breeders like me that are producing these in captivity because that will encourage us to keep doing it because these are fantastic animals. They can be tamed down if they're worked with as babies like this guy was. This guy was captive produced. He's about three years old. And he is very tame for this species. This is rare. This is a lot of hard work on my part and the person that bred him to get them to this point. This animal, as you, if you watch the other episode that I filmed with these guys, we talk about crested geckos. But this animal is my true passion. They are, they might not, they're, to me it's beautiful. And he's actually, gorgeous. he's actually, he will get very, very dark and his pattern will really come out. But he looks pretty light now because it's daytime. But if I exposed him to some humidity and some darkness, he would get really, really black. Almost black and lots of pattern. But that eye is something else. Yeah, especially like their toes. I love, they're like, if you guys can their, look. Their feet are huge. And then they curl back as they like move. Yep, and they have, the cool thing about these geckos is you can see the claws. They, unlike most geckos, this gecko species can move their claw independent of the toe. And he's got a pretty good grip on me. They're sharp. They're not, it's not digging in me and it's not going to scratch. But these guys are found in the mid-level canopy of the rainforest. And in tree hollows and those little claws help them grip and climb. Along with the millions and millions of hairs on their pads on their feet. So, this is an animal... I'm truly passionate about this because I want to be able to produce these and have people buy these without having to worry about them escaping and being able to handle them. This is, this is a very healthy specimen. Like leopard geckos, these guys will store fat in their tail. He has a very thick tail. He's, got, he's a heavy weight. He's actually a little bit overweight, so i got to watch how much I feed him. But these guys eat the same diet that crested geckos eat. It's a powder-based diet. And I will grab a bag. This is the main diet that I feed my crested geckos and my Helmahera geckos. It's Pangea. It's a fruit mix diet. 
This one is Fig and Insects, which happens to be a favorite of these Helmaharas. Comes in lots of different flavors. You can sustain an animal like this or a crested gecko with this diet. Don't have to feed them bugs. Bugs are recommended because it helps them, the, especially the babies and the young ones, help them grow faster. And it's just, it's a variety in their diet. But that's why geckos like this and crested geckos are so easy to care for because of what they eat. You don't have to have bugs if you don't want them. But of these guys will, especially as babies, they will eat lots and lots of bugs. And as they get to this size and as an adult, this one, he won't eat bugs. He will not touch it. doesn't matter what kind of bug it is. I've tried dubia roaches, mealworms, superworms, hornworms, waxworms. He prefers the fruit because it's he's got a sweet tooth and then i've noticed that their tails are a bit different than the the rest of their body right yep and that these guys can lose they will lose their tail it will grow back the other defense mechanism with these guys is if i were if he were trying to run away and i would grab him the skin will just slough off it'll shed off and you'll end up with a handful of skin and the gecko will run away. <laughs> That's how they evade predators in the wild. True escape artist, guys. And they're... He is... And at this point, we've had him out earlier when she was shooting some B-roll footage. But he's at the point now where I can just read this animal, how he's sucked tight to my hand. And he's not really moving. This is, this is true with... you got to know your reptile. This reptile is telling me... I want to go back in my enclosure because I'm stressed out. So, but these are, they're wonderful animals. They make great pets. Uh, see, he's kind of happy. He's got the tongue lick going. Mm -hmm. Give him a little chin rub. He's reacting to the camera now. I don't know what it is about cameras and reptiles, but it's like they sense, I don't, they get nervous. I don't know why. Like what is this black thing coming towards me? Yeah, I don't know if they view the lens as like a, the eye of a predator, but and see he's moving back. He's like, okay, I've had enough. But you can keep these guys very similar to crested geckos. I keep this is the same 66 quart tub that I use for crested geckos, and ideally this tub should be much larger. But I keep them in this size because I'm going to be breeding them, and it just allows me to keep a better eye on things. And at some point I'm gonna upgrade these to much larger tubs. Mm -hmm. But I've got lots of plants, and fake plants in here. I've got this drain pipe that it's a real tight fit, but he'll climb in there. Feels nice and real safe and secure like it's a hollow branch. Mm -hmm. He's got the food and water. And the with these geckos, they like a higher humidity. So in the evening, I will spray this tub down, mist it down with water and they will drink water off the leaves and off the decor, plus out of the water bowl, but it gives them that extra humidity. But you don't, they're not a frog. They don't wanna be wet all the time. They have to have a period where they dry out, otherwise you can get skin infections or they can even develop respiratory infections. And these are really cool guys. Like you said, you don't have to feed them bugs or anything. So like for those people who are like afraid of insects, gets like skittish and stuff like that, it may be asking a lot, but let's see if he will. You want to show them what it's like to eat on camera? There you, there you go. See, guys, there's no mess. There's no live bugs. You don't have to like yeah, order. He's, like, he's camera shy. He, just a little bit. It's just like baby food almost. It's just a little. Yes, mess. and with the crested geckos, one of the first things that they fed them is baby food because mm -hmm. there were no diets specifically developed for crested geckos and let's try it let's see we'll pull out a younger version of this we'll see if this one will cooperate let's try teeny tiny babies they're not really that let's, tiny though let's go like this And this, you will see, this baby, in general, in the wild, there's a lot of variability in the color of these things. You have lighter animals, darker animals, and this one, 
it's a little bit lighter, and you can see how fast they are. <laughs> so this animal right here was hatched June 17th of 2020. So it is almost seven months old. And how long till they're fully grown with these guys? Uh, about a year, year and a half. Yeah, just... And this one, you can tell if this was a wild caught baby, I wouldn't be doing this. This was captive bred by a breeder, and it's much calmer. And then the tail. Oh, there you go. He just and see, this is pee and poop everywhere, guys. Yes, <laughs> that's uh, that's reptiles in a nutshell. All right. And they're there. they're just like kids, guys. You're gonna have to clean up messes like this. That's Pets and kids are like. Very, very similar in my eyes. And that was actually mostly water mm -hmm. in the urate. There was no solid in that. Like with, if you're familiar with snakes, especially garter snakes and a lot of the water snakes, they musk, which is real stinky when you try to capture them. And that musk is basically telling you hey, leave me alone because I stink, so drop me. Mm -hmm. And that's what they do to predators. Okay, so does it have any, like, health concerns, right? Like, are we, do you have any issues with them going to the vet? Do you have any issues at all health-wise, like, um, while you're raising them? Does anything, like, any, any general things that go wrong? With with these guys and crested geckos, the, the biggest thing, and this is true with a lot of reptiles, is respiratory infections from being kept too wet all the time. They're not a frog. So if they're kept too wet and too humid, they can develop respiratory infections similar to like pneumonia that humans get. And too wet also inhibits shedding, but at the same time too dry also causes shedding issues. There's that fine line. Mm -hmm. And you can see in this tub, because I sprayed these this morning, they're still nice and wet, and the paper towel is still a little bit damp, mm -hmm. but I will not, and like I said, this is the escape artist, that you don't want to grab these. Just kind of want to let yep, them come in. Do that. I've gotten good at it because they like to escape, <laughs> but I will not spray this tub until this is basically dry, or mostly dry. Okay, at least you landed on that. Escape from Alcatraz. And this one is not, this is nothing. This one is actually, as crazy as this looks and as it's acting, this one, I have other ones. If we would have gotten on the floor, we'd be stopping filming and running around trying to find <laughs> it. But yeah, I will not spray this again probably till tomorrow when this is almost completely dried out. And in nature... In a lot of these areas where these geckos are found, you have wet seasons and dry seasons. So you try to best mimic that in or in captivity. These guys are adorable. And like I said, there's no like mess that comes with it. Like even their like poop, it's kind of like bird poop, like you yes. said in the other episode. If you guys come in here and then like look inside, it's really not messy at yeah. all. And I keep these on paper towel. So when I clean this, the quick cleaning that I do, I will pull that paper towel out, replace it, put the stuff back in, and then about once every week to 10 days, I will take everything out of here, and I have a steam cleaner. Steam will kill everything. Mm -hmm. So I have a three-step process. I start, I empty the tub, and I use just regular plain Dawn dish detergent and hot water. Okay. Mix it up, clean this all out, wipe it out let it it's still a little bit wet then i take a spray bottle with bleach and water in it spray it down and let it soak just let it sit so the soap and water gets up kind of any leftover poop or dried on food and then the bleach and water will sanitize everything and then i alternate so some weeks i will then use a steam cleaner with the really hot steam to sanitize everything and I can use the steam cleaner even on the bark and it will sanitize the bark. And then 
the weeks that I don't do the steam cleaning, I use a product called, I got it here in the spray bottle. It's a blue product that's called chlorohexidine. It's a veterinary grade disinfectant that it's not harmful to animals. It's actually used in veterinary practice with horses and dogs and things. You can pour the undiluted chlorohexidine right into the open wound on a big animal, like a dog, a cat, or a horse, and it'll basically clean the wound. But I, I dilute it with water, and then I'll spray down the tub and let it sit. So I've used soap, I've used bleach, and then either steam or this. That way you're covering everything, and they're that tub is gonna be sanitary. It's gonna be not hospital grade sterilized, but if there's any viruses, bacteria, mold, anything in there, it's now been cleaned. Perfect, guys. These guys are adorable. Like I said, very, very low maintenance. Um, and then with the cage and stuff, it also depends on how fancy you wanna to get, so you don't have to. You can keep it like that until you get some more funds, or these are, like I said, really, really cool animals. <laughs> very much so escape artists too and talking about the enclosures if you're just somebody that's going to keep one or two or three geckos i one of the big industry standards is this is an exoterra enclosure they're a front opening terrarium nice easy access um they've got vents to pull the air in here and it vents out the top of the screen great enclosure specifically designed for reptiles then and this size enclosure this is a 12 inch by 12 inch by 18 tall mm -hmm. it's about 65 dollars great enclosures i have them i use them but for somebody that's looking for something more budget friendly and just it's easier to acquire because almost all pet shops will have them this right here is a 20 gallon long aquarium and this acrylic door conversion kit so with these geckos crested geckos helmahara geckos vertical space is important so turning the aquarium on its end and you buy this acrylic door from a company called i Heart geckos it's iheartgeckos.com great product i love them can't say enough good things about them but opens up easy access mm. and I want these are the first two that I did I use velcro to attach it mm -hmm. so I could pull it off and make it easier to clean mm -hmm. but what they actually recommend doing is like with this one it's siliconed in okay so in theory I could put like many different species of like tree frogs the red-eyed tree frogs the milks tree frogs different tree frogs in here and I could put water up to these vents in here and this is waterproof oh okay but these doors I can't say enough good things about them. If you're looking for, if you're going to buy one gecko and you're looking to house it, and actually I've got one set up right here that I haven't put anything in yet. This one right here, this just gives you a good idea of what, it's siliconed in there. That's water, I mean, and the silicone is dried, but I did this a long time ago. But generally it's not going to come free. But... This is a 29 gallon aquarium. So the door for this is the same as the door for the 20 gallon longs. Mm -hmm. And you could put one crested gecko in here as an adult. This is a mansion for the crested gecko oh. in captivity. But if you wanna, for display, something that looks really nice, that's the way to go. Okay. I keep my animals here in these tubs because I have so many and this is a breeding facility. These are my pets and I treat them as my pets, but it's also a breeding facility. Hmm. And they're, I know keepers that keep 10, 15, 20 geckos and they choose to use tubs just because of the space. Yep. There's no right way to do it. There's no wrong way to do it. Um, there's lots of different ways to take care of these things. This is just what works best for me. Okay, so for the people, our viewers that want to get in contact with you, um, uh, do you have your own website, Facebook, or give yep. them a few ways to get in contact? You can find me on primarily on Instagram at Creative Coriolophus. They'll put links in the description down below on this video. 
They might even flash it on the screen yeah. right here. You can also find me on Facebook. Uh, just search for Creative Coriolophus. You can also find me if you want to send me a text message, if you're interested in a gecko. Even if you've got questions about you want to buy a gecko, you're looking at doing research, you want to talk to a breeder, you can call me or you can send me a text message. My number is 612-367-6784. And I'll gladly help you, even if you're not going to buy from me, even if you just want to do research. I'm a resource. The important part of the reptile keeping hobby is doing research on what you're going to buy. And I'm more than willing to help somebody looking to get into it. I, even, even if you're not going to buy from me, because if you're going to buy from a friend of mine that's a breeder or somebody else that has these animals, I just want the animals to be taken care of. Mm -hmm. The number one priority is taking care of the animal and having the information to do that. And I don't care how you get it. Get it from me. Ask me questions. Um, I'm very active on my social media. You can find me on there, send me messages, comment on my pictures. I post pictures, I do videos. I'm always willing to help. Perfect, guys. And until next time, guys, don't forget to hit the like button, hit that subscribe, and make sure you leave a nice comment for us down below. See you guys next time.